Today I want to talk about an amazing assurance that we have from Yehovah, Yehovah. Um, that being that he will not remember our sins when we repent and um, what the uh, what the implications of that are whether that means he's forgotten our sins or uh, does he mean something different and what does that mean for our uh, relationships with other people as well and us forgiving their sins do we just forget about what they've done well in ezekiel eighteen twenty two, it says all the transgressions which he has done shall not be remembered the verb zakar there against him this verb uh, zakar it's translated meaning to remember but really um, the concept is bigger than that it's to call to mind to make the forefront of your thoughts uh, we see this word used of course in Genesis 8 Elohim God remembered Noah Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were uh, with him in the ark it's not like it, he forgot about him um, and he, he, you know Elohim was like oh no Noah forgot about him in the ark it's not remembered like that it's to actively call to mind in Genesis thirty twenty two, it says that God remembered Rachel and he listened to her uh, regarding uh, her having children again it's not as if he uh, had forgotten about her it's just he made her the thing that he was attending to at that time Joseph um, says to the cupbearer remember me when it is well with you um, and it says mention me to Pharaoh there in the English and it's it's kind of um, it's another word that you could use instead of zakar it's part of what zakar is encompassing if you mention something then you have called it to mind um, and you are attending to that thing currently so that's what he asks that the cupbearer would do uh, that he would zakar him to pharaoh um, and seeing the Hebrew word is the same uh, in both instances there shows you how uh, the word can mean different things than just the English to remember we see also in Exodus 2 uh, God heard their groaning God remembered his covenant with Abraham with the Yitzchak and with Yaakov that is to say he acted um, in furtherance of the covenant uh, that was the thing that was um, the operable thing at the time um, that's why he acted in the way that he did by doing what he did he was zakar his covenant remembering um, if you want to put the English word in there but hope you can see that it's a broader word than just uh, to you know remember as, as opposed to forget we are of course to zakar the Sabbath day we are to uh, have that uh, as the operable principle in, in our minds um, we're not just to not forget the Sabbath day we're to actively remember it and that is um, that is going to look uh, different to just not forgetting it of course you're making it important in your life by uh, remembering it or by your Zakarit 
The full uh, passage from Ezekiel 18 says, The soul who sins shall die, the son shall not bear the crookedness of the father, nor the father bear the crookedness of the son. The righteousness of the righteous is upon himself, and the wrongness of the wrong is upon himself. But the wrong, if he turns from all his sins which he has done, and shall guard all my laws, and shall do justice and righteousness, he shall certainly live, he shall not die. All the transgressions which he has done shall not be zakar against them. Elohim is not going to call these things to mind. In his righteousness that he has done, he shall live. So when... um. When Elohim is dealing with us, he's not dealing with us uh, according to the sins that we've done. Instead, he um, will not zakar those sins. He will not make those the operating uh, principle that he deals with us by. But he hasn't forgotten those sins, um, just as in our relations with other people. It is impossible for us to forget if somebody sins against us. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wrong, declares Master Yehovah? Is it not that he should turn from his ways and live? And that is uh, the best that we can hope for from other people as well. Uh, We don't want them to die because they've treated us badly. Uh, we would rather that they turned and did what was correct that would be uh, good for us and good for them Um, but we don't want to remember um, sins that we have forgiven in other people you know the classic idea of uh, the wife who's always bringing up stuff that's happened in the past that's not a good way to operate uh, with people. Um, people aren't going to respond well to us um, bringing up things that they've done in the past. I'm very fortunate or very uh, blessed to have a wife who doesn't do that, who um, will not bring up things that have been done in the past. Um, who will uh, go forward on the basis of how you want to go forward. Verse 24 says, But when a righteous uh, one turns away from his righteousness and does unrighteousness according to all the abominations that the wrong one has done, shall he live all his righteousness which he has done? shall not be zakar. That's not the principle upon which Yehovah will act for his trespass which he has committed and for his sin which he has committed. For them he shall die. So the way that Yehovah will deal with us if we turn from doing what is right before him he will um, deal with us according to the wrong that we are doing at that time. That's what he will bring to mind. That's how he will deal with us. And you said the way of Yehovah is not right. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not right? Is it not your ways that are not right? Matthew 6, 14-15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father shall also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither shall your father forgive your trespasses. So we can learn from how uh, Yehovah uh, forgives us that he will not remember those transgressions. Uh, We can learn from that and see when we forgive other people, we don't remember their transgressions against them. In Romans 4.4 it says, 
to him who is working the reward is not reckoned as favor or grace but as a death so we can see that it's not because of someone's works that they are um, they are forgiven it's because they act in a way that is trustworthy they uh, declare perhaps that they will be trustworthy and they um, they enter into covenant with Yehovah um, declaring that they will they've repented of their former behavior and they will um, continue forward uh, with different behavior based on a recognition of what is good now that's not uh, required for you to forgive them you should forgive people even if they hate you you should forgive them what I'm talking about here is establishing a relationship with somebody who has harmed you in the past how do you go forward in Jeremiah 29 verse 19 it says for they did not heed my words declares Yehovah which I sent to them by my servants the prophets rising up early and sending them yet you did not listen declares Yehovah so when the people in the old covenant when they sinned against Yehovah he sent prophets to them to uh, warn them and tell them what the right way to go is but they didn't listen they didn't uh, change their behavior um, from what Yehovah does we can uh, see a better way forward for us with people with whom we want to establish relationships but perhaps they've sinned against you in the past and perhaps there is no trust there particularly I think of people that write to us and they're having a difficulty with their spouse uh, you know their spouse isn't following the word um, and just speaking to them doesn't seem to make any difference there is a way that Yehovah has acted towards us um, that we can learn from in Proverbs 31 verse 11 it says of uh, the ideal wife if you like the heart of her husband shall trust her now perhaps um, perhaps trust has gone in your relationship um, so this cannot be because of transgressions that have happened um, but the way that Yehovah models for us um, Israel were unfaithful so he uh, divorced the house of Israel you know the house of Judah rejected the Messiah they ended up getting kicked out of the land but the way that he dealt, dealt with it so that they could come back to him we see in Hebrews 9.15 because of this he is the mediator of a, a new covenant so the death having taken place for redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant those who are called might receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance so what he does is he draws a line under all the transgressions and he forgives those transgressions uh, for people who come back and he establishes a new covenant and says right okay all of that was wrong didn't work out well this is how uh, we're going to go forward from this situation so if you are in a situation a marriage where you have um, you've lost trust in your wife you don't really have a good way to reconnect this is the best way to do it to establish 
a new covenant the transgressions under the first covenant are um are redeemed if you like um by your will to do what is right um and it says here that, that so that those who are called might um receive the promise of the everlasting inheritance in our, our analogy the everlasting inheritance is simply the way that the marriage should have been uh, from the beginning sometimes things spiral out of control and there's no way to um, no way to get them back on track it doesn't matter how many prophets you send how much uh, you tell the other person what is wrong sometimes you just need to draw a line under it and uh, go forward so that you can actually achieve what you wanted in uh, the first place Hebrews 8 verse 13 says by saying new he has made the first old again the first covenant didn't work out now what becomes old and uh, becomes old and grown aged is near disappearing so you do not remember that anymore you do not uh, remember the transgressions under the old covenant you make a new covenant which is better in hebrews 8 6 to 10 it says but now he has obtained a more excellent service inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant which was constituted on better promises for if that first covenant had been faultless then no place would have been sought for a second for finding fault with them he says see the days are coming says Yehovah when I shall conclude with the house of Israel and with the house of Yehudah a new covenant not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they did not continue in my covenant and I disregarded them says Yehovah so that first covenant didn't work out the people who want to come into covenant with Yahweh now make better promises that's what you do you establish with the person how it is to be going forward um, and then you can re-establish relationship with the person you may well have um, forgiven them for their sins but how will you um, how will you forget those things that have been done well this is the model that Yehovah gives us because this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Israel after those days says Yehovah giving my laws in their mind and I shall write them on their hearts and I shall be their Elohim and they shall be my people uh, marriage sort of um, language that is used there the first covenant was like a marriage covenant also but that didn't work out the people didn't do according as they had said that they would do uh, so he says I'll make a new covenant with them and in this covenant they will be minded to do the things that I want them to do uh, and I'll write it on their hearts so it's will throw away all of what was in the past and anyone who wants to return to me can return to me and I will be uh, the Elohim and they will be my people Ephesians 4 31 to 32 says let all bitterness and anger and bad temper and shouting and slander be put away from you along with all ill will be kind towards one another tender-hearted forgiving one another as Elohim also forgave you in Messiah and you might think well I know these things I know that I'm supposed to be tender-hearted I'm supposed to be kind um, 
I know these things are true, but that's not how I'm being. That's the essence of rebellion. We know that one of them reproved harding his neck is suddenly broken and there is no healing. We've got a way that we can make these things uh, better. We shouldn't say, well, yeah, I know how I'm supposed to be, but that's not how I'm going to act. If you have a spouse with whom uh, you have had a bad relationship uh, during the first part of your marriage to them, then what you should do is make a new covenant with them, establish what the ground rules are going forward, um, and then both come into covenant again based on better promises. Yeah, hope I'm willing. I'll see you next week.